Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be taking a look at how to set up Shad PS4, the PlayStation 4 emulator for the PC, so that you can attempt to run some of your PS4 games on your computer, because this emulator has been taking some big steps forward recently with the ability to boot some 3D games like Red Dead Redemption, which is able to boot into the game and at a playable frame rate. And you've also got Bloodborne, which has just recently been able to be booted into the game. Uh, obviously, it's not fully playable yet. There's still a lot of problems, but it's actually able to boot in game and it's making some significant progress. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the simulator set up. And we're also going to try and get Bloodborne booted into the game. So let's go ahead and take a look at this here. So to get the simulator, first of all, we're going to head over to shadps4.net, which is the official website for the emulator. So you can right click and open this up in a new tab to take you over to the GitHub. So there is the latest official release here that you can download for Shad PS4 version 0.2.0. This version is good, I guess, for people who want to just try different PS4 games. It's the latest official release, but there are more up to date versions that you can download that are more on the bleeding edge of things. So if you want to get the most latest versions available, then you want to make sure that you're signed into your GitHub account here. And then once you're signed in, you can head over to the actions section here. And then you just want to select your platform. In my case, I'm running Windows and we want the QT version, which has the launcher and the graphical user interface, whereas the regular Windows version will just have the command line interface. So you want to select the QT version here. And then all the ones that have the green tick have a compiled version that you can download. And these are the latest builds that are currently available. Now, I want to try and run Bloodborne and there is a specific build for Bloodborne that can boot in game, which is the BB hacks for Bloodborne hacks. So we're going to select this version here, the latest uh, Bloodborne version that we can find. And we're going to download this Shad PS4 Win64 QT. Hit the download button and get that downloaded on your PC. Okay, so if you open up that zip file that you just downloaded and copy all of the files into a folder on your computer. So I've got a Shad PS4 folder that I just copied it all in. And then we're going to run the Shad PS4.exe to launch the emulator. We'll go to more info and run anyway and that will get it up and running. Now it's going to ask us for a directory to install games. So I've just created this PS4 games folder on one of my hard drives. I'm going to use this to store my PS4 games in. So I'm going to hold down shift, right click on this and copy as path. And then we're just going to paste in the path in here and get rid of the quotation marks and click OK. And then we should get the emulator open. So what we need to do next is actually get some games installed. So we're going to install Bloodborne. So the way the emulator runs the games is it runs the extracted game files. So all of the game files inside a folder and it just launches the executable. So most games that you'll download for PS4 will be in package file form, which means they are compressed into a installable format for the PS4. And those will need to be extracted in order for you to be able to run it on the emulator. In addition to that, if you do have a jailbreakable PS4, you can dump your own games using something like Items Flow to dump the game files to a USB drive, which will also decrypt the executables so that it can run in Shad PS4. And you can then copy that over to your game directory. But in this case, for most people, you will be dealing with these package files. So I recommend downloading an application like PS4 Package Viewer by Lman, which I will leave down in the video description. This application allows you to drag and drop your package file inside and then that will give you some details. If you go to extra, make sure list contents is unchecked and then you'll get all the information here. So if it is a package file that you're going to try and install, you need to make sure it's a fake package. So in this program here in the bottom left hand corner, it'll tell you if it's a fake package or a retail package. It needs to be a fake package, which is a decrypted package where the executables decrypted. That is what you need. So we want to make sure we have a fake package version. Then you also want to check the title ID because any update that you want to install for the game also needs to be using the same title ID. So in this case, it's CUSA 03173 for Bloodborne. And then if we look at the 1.09 update, which we are also going to need to install, if we open this up in Package Viewer, you can see it's also for 03173. So it should be able to successfully update our game. And, and it's also a fake package as well. So you just want to confirm that before you try and install these packages to make sure everything is going to work. So from there, we just need to open up the emulator again and go to file and install packages. 
And then we're just going to select our game package file first that we want to install. So we're going to click open and that will go ahead and extract that package file to our games folder that we selected when we first opened the emulator. Okay, once we have the main package file installed, we've got game installed. We can click OK and it now shows up and it is launchable. But we also want to install our update as well. So we're going to go to file, install packages and then select the game update. And if it's for the correct title ID, it should detect it. So patch detected, game is installed 1.00 and this will update to 1.09. So we'll say yes and it will then merge our update package. We can click OK and you can see we're now updated to 1.09. Now you can also change the view here if you want. You can change it to like a grid view if you prefer this view. I prefer list view to be honest, I'll just leave it like this. So we also have settings. We can configure our settings. You can select your language here. You've got your full screen if you want full screen. You can also uh, enable PS4 Pro, which will make the game think it's running on a PS4 Pro rather than a regular PS4. Generally, I would leave that off unless it is uh, specified that that's a requirement. And then the log type is async, which is normal for most games. But I think Bloodborne runs better if you change it to sync mode. And then we've got our GPU settings here and we can select the GPU if you have multiple, you know, graphics installed because your CPU might have integrated graphics and then your GPU. So make sure you actually manually select your proper graphics card on your in your computer so it doesn't use the integrated graphics just in case. And then I would also just leave the resolution at 720p. You can bump it up to 1080. It usually works fine. But I found if I've tried to go higher than 1080p that it's um, that it doesn't work or it just crashes or doesn't display properly at this point. And then there's a few other options here that we don't really have to worry about at the moment, unless part of the requirements for the game you're trying to run is enabling some of these options. So with that, we can hit apply and hit save and we should be all good. So if we just try and run this, if we just hit play right now, you should actually notice that it should be able to at least launch into the menus. So we run it and there we go. We can see it is launching just as is. So it will actually run without any modules dumped from your jailbroken PS4. It is recommended to install the modules because you're generally going to get better compatibility, potentially higher frame rates uh, if you do install the modules. But you can see here that the game is actually running just as is. Uh, without actually installing any additional modules. But it's obviously going to be better if you do get the modules for better compatibility. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. So if we just close out of the emulator now, after running the emulator for the first time, a user folder will be created in the same folder as the emulator. If we go in there and go into the sys modules folder, this is where you're going to want to put all of your modules from your PS4. So if you go back to the Shad PS4 website and go to the compatibility list here, it will show you what modules you want dumped from your PS4. So it says they're not all necessary, but they are recommended. And mainly you want ones that are dumped from an 11.0 PS4. So if you have a PS4 that's on 11.0, you can dump these modules because these are the modules that the developers are actually using. So if you do have a jailbreakable PS4 that you can use to get the modules, you're going to want to make sure that you run the jailbreak, get Gold Hen running and then go to the gold hen settings, go to server settings and enable the FTP server and make sure you're connected to your network so that you can connect through FTP. Then you can use an FTP client on your computer to connect to your PS4 remotely over the network. And then we can go to the system folder and then we can go into the common folder and then the lib folder. And this contains all of the SPRX files so I would just copy the SPRX files that are actually listed in here because those are the ones that the emulator is actually going to use. So I'm just going to select all nine of those files and copy them over. Again, it may require more of these in future. More will be potentially added. But as you can see, we've got them all copied over here. Now for Bloodborne specifically, it's recommended not to use libsedisc.map.sprx because it can cause you to get a gray screen or a black screen in game. So I'm just going to get rid of that one for now, just for running Bloodborne. But once you've got all of those modules in the Sys modules folder, you're pretty much all set up and ready to go. Again, that is not required uh, to run games in the emulator. It's just for improving compatibility. So when it comes to getting your PS4 controller working with the emulator, it will not work just straight out of the box. Uh, you do need to use something like either DS4 Windows, which I'll leave a link to. You can just download the software here. 
and then extract it into a folder, run DS4 Windows. It will probably ask you to install a couple of drivers first of all, and then reboot your PC. And then you can plug in your controller or connect it via Bluetooth and it should show up here in DS4 Windows and then it should work with the emulator. That's one way. Another way that might work as well is using Steam where you can add the emulator as a non-Steam game and launch it through Steam. And I think Steam has its own controller emulation that may work uh, for Shad PS4. So, and last but not least, for Bloodborne specifically, and this hopefully should not be required for other games, but Bloodborne's still very new in getting it uh, booted on this emulator. But with Bloodborne, we need to actually head over to our uh, PS4 games directory where our extracted game is for Bloodborne. And then we can go to our DVD root folder. And then we need to go down to the param folder and then the draw param folder here and basically delete everything but the first four files. We keep all of those files, but we delete all of the other files in here. And this is just something that we have to do just now, hopefully only temporary to get it working. Otherwise, I just get a black screen when I launch the game, when we actually get in game. So we're going to delete those files, leave these four in here, and we should be able to actually get it going here. So we're going to run Shad PS4. And I'll also go into the settings. I'll enable full screen this time. And launch. And now my controller should be configured so I can use my PS4 controller with it. I mean, this is unbelievable that we, we can just load this game up right now. The menus work pretty well, so we can do a new game. Uh, we'll just go ahead next. Yeah, the controller's working fine. Now this cutscene does not work. Um, there are ways that we can actually improve things even more with a few mods that we can install into the game to make it run a little bit better. Um, but this particular part doesn't, so we'll just skip that. Uh, here we go. So when I go to enter name here, you'll see I'll autofill it with Shad PS4. And then we can go ahead and click finish, finalize contract. And as you can see here, the game is actually loading. So this is a, a like a real-time cutscene, I believe, or an in-game cutscene at least. And we can see it is actually loading. So a lot of textures, a lot of texture and lighting issues still at this point. But again, this is still very early being able to run Bloodborne on the PC. Now again, there are a few things we can do to improve this further. It is running a little bit slow right now. As you can see, it's a little bit slow-mo. Yeah, my PC is making quite a bit of noise right now. It is uh, working pretty hard to run this. Uh, th that'll get better over time. I don't think this emulator is actually going to be too uh, power hungry in future. So yeah, as you can see, we are loaded up. We can get into the game. We can move around here. The game is loaded successfully. So what we can do is we can actually do a couple of other things to fix this a little bit and make it run a little bit better. Uh, motion blur, chromatic aberration. There's a few other settings that um, make this run slower. There's also the 60 FPS patch from Lance McDonald, which can allow it to hit higher frame rates. So we'll go ahead and see if we can install some of that stuff. Wow, look at this. Even these in-game menus here are all running properly. That is pretty awesome. So we can go ahead and exit game. So yeah, anyway, if we go ahead and just quit out of the emulator, easiest way to do this is to just close the command window there. So there is this mod that you can install, this unfiltered mod with no FXAA. This will disable um, anti-aliasing. It will also disable uh, lens simulation, motion blur, shutter speeds, a bunch of other settings. But that is not the recommended way. The recommended way to disable motion blur and chromatic aberration to reduce flickering and other black screen issues is to actually patch the executable. So we'll go over that real quick. There is also the 60 FPS patch from Lance McDonald that you can download. I'll leave all of this stuff down in the description. If you want to apply the 60 FPS patch, you just want to download this. And then you also want to download the self util patched um, from CYB1K. You can download it here. So you just want to download those. Okay, so real quick, if we go back into the folder that contains our extracted game files, we've got the eboot.bin, our main executable file. We need to decrypt this by dragging this onto selfutilpatch.exe. That'll create the eboot.elf, which is the decrypted version. We'll go, we'll rename the original one to something else like 
underscore original so we have a backup of it and then we'll rename eboot.elf to eboot.bin so the decrypted version becomes our main executable then we just want to extract the 1080p executable for the 60 fps patch and then we're just going to drag the eboot.bin on top and run this and that will apply the 60 fps patch to the executable so that is pretty easy the hard part comes when you want to actually you know manually patch motion blur out and chromatic aberration because that has to be done manually we can use a hex editor i use hxd for this you just drag and drop the bin file inside this is just for disabling motion blur and chromatic aberration so to disable motion blur we're just going to copy these bytes here and search for them in the executable as hex values and that should find them there and then we just want to replace them with these values here so we're just going to right click and paste right and that will go ahead and enter it there then we just want to do the same thing for chromatic aberration so copy the bytes here Control f defined search for the bytes as hex values uh, we'll have to go further up so make sure we go to the start of the file and then search or we do search direction all and then that'll find it and then we're just going to go ahead and again replace it with these values here so we'll right click and paste right and again i'll leave that stuff in the description Control s to save and now you've patched out motion blur and chromatic aberration and that is how you apply those patches all right so at that point we should be good to give this another try here see if it runs any better i don't know if it's going to make a huge difference but we'll take a look here and give this another try so we'll run bloodborne and here we go so yeah that already looks better without the motion blur that definitely looks better and it's running faster too look at this i mean it's not quite 60 fps i wouldn't say but i mean not far off i mean look at me knocking stuff over here the speed of the animations it's definitely smoother oh a little bit of lag there though oh now we're lagging now we're lagging a little bit skybox is rendering um am i still being chased by that guy no i think i'm good i think i'm good but yeah there we go it is pretty dark but as you can see you know lighting isn't really working right but i mean we're in game and it's actually running at a what you could say is a kind of playable frame rate at this point obviously when things get pretty heavy with uh, lots of enemies on screen and stuff it's probably going to drop down to like four or five fps and i think it will crash if you get killed at the moment so yeah but obviously this stuff is going to improve as time goes on and this is a, a pretty big step forward i think this will crash if i if i die let's try and die here i don't have a weapon right now so yep oh we just hit a crash right there so that was Bloodborne running on a PC right now in 2024. Pretty awesome stuff there. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to make this quick guide here to cover how to get this emulator set up. Even though it is still work in progress, I think it is very impressive. And it's great for testing and just trying out these different PS4 games. And being able to test the emulator as it continues to improve over time. Because it is really making significant progress in a very short period of time. And I really hope that it continues at this pace because if it does continue at this pace, it really won't be long until we have like fully playable Bloodborne with all the graphics and everything just like it is on the PS4 itself. So yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.